Hey guys, Augie Sanche and welcome to the channel. Today I want to share with you guys my new Technomancer build that is an AP build focused on using the turrets. As you can see in the background, it's really OP and they just rip through everything. And I'm going to actually go out on a limb and say that it, I think it's better than Firepower Techno right now. Obviously, once you do get all the mods and everything for a full Firepower Techno, it's still going to be the strongest like solo DPS carry in the game. They're still going to delete everything, but this is just the best ease of play and just you know relaxing and easy that you can just go farm hours and hours while you're grinding up your ascension and your apocalypse tier and everything just really nice and easy it kind of plays itself and it's pretty easy to set up if you are coming from a firepower techno if you had the borealis set that's even better as we'll be actually using that so let's hop straight on into the build now shall we so coming into the build the pieces we are using is actually three piece borealis the same three that you would use for firepower techno so that helps out quite a bit if you did have that from before and then the helmet we are using is the new Technomonger's mask. And then the boots we're using. Ideally, you want to have purple boots with anomaly power status and cooldown reduction. The same stats as the helmet you see over here. I just haven't actually found any yet. And the mods on this one is pretty good because you do want purple boots with these mods on them. Now, the, new, the reason I say status power, that is actually our main damage boost after anomaly power because... Of this ability of here called hail shot the mod increases the turret damage based on your status power so your cryo turrets are the ones who are going to do all the work and all the damage and pretty much jack up the cryo turrets and you'll be doing all the damage and improved coolant is also another mod you can see on the boots there that doubles the fly rate of the deployed turret that is probably the biggest damage increase to the turrets because it doubles the fly rate so technically doubling the damage since all your damage is from your Alright, so now that mod I actually did not have for a while. And while we are speaking about mods, we'll just work our way up now on the boots. As you can see, you want those two mods, and for the reasons I did list above. But improved coolant, you do not need that to clear. I actually, while I was farming up the gear, to actually try and get that, because that mod itself is from the new set. The pants, it's on the Technomonger's leg armor. I have it there for you guys as a little example. Improved coolant. So if you get the Techmonger's leg armor, make sure to dismantle those actually then put the mod somewhere onto your build if you can i would suggest putting that mod over like everything that gives you the most damage out of everything obviously you do need hail shot so that it does stack with your status power as well so those two over there your boots are pretty much these two mods of here is the highest damage boost in the build we go up to and obviously that um, chaos slot over there life of the party is not something you do want this is the best i have got yet I will make a new refined build once I've actually got all of the gear to like the best in slot with the best mods on the third slot. But for now, whatever chaos gear you get that has like some of the nice mods on them or just anyone that's better, go and go ahead and use that. And then moving on to the gloves, we have Shatter and Trample Weak. Now this does come with Shatter and then Trample Weak you gotta put on yourself. And then Kingslayer doesn't really help this build at all. So there's another mod slot I could pick up for anything else. That's a lot better. We will make a new build, like I said going over all of that right now this is just kind of a budget build to get you in and get you farming so we can get out there and start destroying them them levels and get all the gear and stuff moving on with the waste cloth of borealis it does come with a freezing boost and then you put radical therapy on it and then spare mag obviously you want to replace that well, what i could uh, suggest that you look out for on your ascension perks is a long winter mod that is the one that increases the radius of your cold snap that is also a really good one and then moving on, we do have the Robe of Borealis. Comes with Icicle Storm, which is actually going to be one of our highest, like how we kill a lot of enemies really fast, as you'll see in the video. And then Euthanizer, we do have the 60% more damage against enemies afflicted by Toxic that you need to put on there. And then Captain Hunter, this one over here is actually perfect. That one I wouldn't change at all. Captain Hunter, very good. Very lucky that I got that on the chest. And then moving on to the Helm, we have Double Trouble and Twins. This is the Technomonger's Mask. Now this does roll with Double Trouble on it. And then you just mod in Twins. And then Painful Chill. Again, I would want that to rather be uh, Long Winter, which increases Cold Snap's range by 50%. Since we will be using Cold Snap pretty much all the time. With our cooldown and everything and how that works. So that's pretty much the mods over there. You can swap them around depending on what you get. Like I said, for the Boots Improved Coolant, you do not need it straight away. So you can run without it. The build will work without it. Just make sure you have that hail shot for the increased turret damage based on your status power. And then the rest of them are pretty mandatory as well. And then obviously long winter you want to try and fit in somewhere. 
to increase the radius. And that's pretty much that. And then moving on for our weapons. I'm using the Funeral Pyre with Shadow Command, Claymore Tyrant. And then obviously the Ultimate Ashen Bullets doesn't really help me there. This is the best that I've gotten now. But I want to replace that later on with something else. Probably like another T3 mod. I've really been playing around with a new T3 mod. That like spawns the skulls and they fly around and deal toxic damage. That seems to be pretty good. And I've played around with that quite a bit. But pretty much any other gun you can get with shadow comment or claymore torrent or any like anomaly things that proc because your guns you won't really be doing anything with your guns you'll just be using them for those t3 mods you will not be holding them down and shooting them you'll just be tapping them to get all these mods going out and then thunderbird with ultimate storm up and then i was lucky to get storm up on the second one these two together do a load of damage especially on the boss when you're like switching between your two guns and just tapping so you get those damage Storm Whip does so much damage, it's crazy. And then Weakness Trap is also nice to give the weakness, and also it gives a lot of damage on that mod itself. But you can put pretty much anything else in there. Um, Shadow Comment, all kinds of stuff, whatever you want to play. Just things that do damage to both of the new mods. We actually get that uh, the Toxic Spreading, or the Fire Beam mod, the one with the Solar Beam. All of those things, all of them work. Just whatever you really want, play around with on your weapons. And also status power, see I did level up the status power on the Thunderbird. Because when you do have that out, your turrets will benefit from the status power, increasing your damage even more. So that's that for all the gear. The secondary, we won't really go over that now. We'll go over that in the BIS when we make the best in slot build. Because you won't really be switching to that now. You'll just kill everything while you're leveling up anyway with this build. Moving on to the skills, we are using Blighter Turret, Cold Snap, and Cryo Turret. Now Blighter Turret, you want to throw out off cooldown pretty much all the time it doesn't do a lot of the damage but it does proc a lot of skill nodes and just give you buffs and things all within your skill trees we'll get to that in a second but yeah throw blighter turret out as often as possible and then cold snap you want to use that as often as possible as well just for the big explosions when you kill everything with the cold snap mod icicle storm and then cryo turret you want to place these two out straight away and also you don't want to throw them out whenever they're off cooldown because when you do throw them down again they do need to reacquire get new targets so they're actually going to be losing damage by spamming cryo turret so only reapply cryo turret if you want to if the duration is about to run out on them or if you want to change position of them but don't spam them if you're in a boss fight for example don't spam them you can spam blighter turret and cold snap those won't do anything to your damage but spamming cryo turret is a dps loss then moving over to our class tree we are going with the tech shaman over here so we'll go down for max health, gadget cooldown, which is our turrets, and uh, cold snap. We got max health, and we go up here for exposing Talon. Every time toxic is flicked on enemy, vulnerable status is inflicted as well. And vulnerable status inflicted on enemy is 40% more effective. So that's the first one we do take there, marked of execution, fracture. Uh, freeze, take 10% more damage. That one's just max health. Moving on, gadget cooldown. We go down here, yeah, enemies below 30 health receive 20% more damage. Anomaly power increase, and then activating a scale, decay skill increases anomaly power by 30% for you and your allies. And as you can see, that is our blighted turret. That's why you want to be spamming it out. And then moving back over the top, we do have max health again. Every time you freeze, this is the same as exposing Talon. Oh no, that's uh, not exactly the same, but a little bit different. But the freeze is afflicting weakness on enemies. And this one is a toxic affecting enemies with vulnerable. But the uh, mark for execution, this one over here, the... They actually do stack, I believe. I'm not sure. I think they do stack. And that's just a lot extra more damage with vulnerable enemies affected by vulnerable. And then moving on, we do have freeze effect on enemies last 20% longer. Increased weapon leech, not really helping us much. Armor by 20%, not too bad. Or healing done by 20% for you and your allies. That's nothing amazing. We just go down the tree of here to get enemies affected with freeze, receive 30% more damage, and then Activating gadget skill increases your anomaly power and weapon damage by 40%. And also, if you do lose all your health, you will receive a second chance to return to the battlefield with 50% of your maximum life. And that can occur once every 180 seconds, so three minutes. Really nice OP tree. A lot of crowd control with the freeze because pretty much everything is frozen all the time. Everything has toxic on, everything has vulnerable. There's a lot of damage. We go over to our PAX tree. We are going with the Desolator. An initial striker, we'll pick that up, and then lethal devices. This actually does 95% of our damage. It does a lot of our damage. You'll see in the end of the damage screen, that's just 
lethal devices does crazy amount of damage. Your ordnance and gadget skills inflict toxic to enemies, hit, and deal an additional 5% of anomaly power as damage if toxic was refreshed. And obviously, if everything is hitting with toxic, it's going to keep being refreshed. So you can do the math. It's a lot of damage. And then that works on our cryo turret and cold snap. Then moving on, painkiller just to damage enemy grants you 2% health regen. Uh, permanence inflicting toxic on enemy has 100% chance to inflict a random additional status. So you'll just keep applying all kinds of statuses to enemies. And then dissection is you'll deal 5% more damage to enemies for every status inflicted on them. So you can see that will add up really fast when you have like all the statuses rolling on them. So desolated tree really really strong with this build and just overall strong with toxic pyro. And then for ascension tree you want to be picking up status power first obviously because that is your damage status power and then anomaly damage increase and then go over to anomaly and then the rest you can just put in wherever i've started going into elite bonus damage i'm gonna max that out first and then i'll play around over here maybe get some um you can just put this in anywhere but those are the priorities really these three over here anomaly power status power and anomaly damage and then obviously elite damage as well and then after that it's really up to you whatever you're missing or lacking you can put that in once you do get to uh, level 200 ascension you can actually get all the points in here so eventually you will have everything just prioritize those and that's pretty much all of that guys i hope this build helps you guys get into world slayer and you're enjoying it as much as i am just like a little budget build to get you guys going if you do like this video please drop a like and a sub i really appreciate it and i'm going to bring you out so much more outrider stuff so stay tuned to the channel and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Augie Sand out. Run free and dive into the sky. Hear the wind crying.